So let's write that down on the next page. So if we go through that process to create the vertex formula, but we might not need to get it into the vertex form, we can just maybe get it into the standard form or maybe we just have it in the standard form and we just need the vertex, that's all we need. So if we just need the vertex, we can get the vertex by doing negative b over 2a. That's what we just found on the other page. And then, as always, if we have the x part of a point to get the y part of the point, right? We have the input to get the output. You just plug in the input. So to get the k part of the vertex or to get the y, you just plug in the x part into the function. So you do f of negative b over 2a to get that y part. So f of negative b over 2a. That's how you get the y. And we can manipulate that expression a little bit more. So if we have a quadratic function, we have zero on one side of the equation. This is what we call solving a quadratic equation or, or getting the quadratic formula. We, we do this if we're trying to find the x-intercepts of a quadratic function, right? because to get the x-intercepts, you plug in zero for the y. And what the quadratic formula is, and you might have heard it before, I know some people sing a song, I won't sing today, we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So this is what we call the quadratic formula. And this will find us the solutions or it will allow us to solve for x. So we use this when we have in a quadratic expression, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And we want to solve for x. So let's say we have a scenario where the height of a firework that's launched from the ground as time passes, so the input is t, is given as this function here, negative 16t squared plus 88t. So we want to first find what is the height of the firework after 1.5 seconds. So when it says after 1.5 seconds, this is going back to a lot of those application or word problems, this is saying that t is equal to 1.5. So the time is 1.5 seconds. So we just want to plug in what is the height that's asking us to find f of x, or I guess in this case, it is s of t. So we wanna find the output essentially. So let's do that. We are looking for s of 1.5. So we have negative 16 times 1.5 squared plus 88 times 1.5. And we can throw this in the calculator and we should get this is 96 feet. So the height of the firework would be 96 feet. So in this instance, this particular firework explodes when it hits its maximum height. So we want to know when does the firework reach its maximum height. We want to know what is that height. And we write to find these values by completing the square and to verify them with graphing. Uh, let's, let's use the results of the completing the square, so the negative b over 2a, because what we're really looking for here is the maximum height. We're looking for the vertex. So this function that we have here, if you throw this in the graphing calculator, it should look something like this, where it has you know x-intercept of 0, and then it reaches its maximum height somewhere around here. So what we're really looking for is this maximum height. And this maximum height is called the vertex. And we just talked about how to get the vertex, right? We can get the vertex, or at least the x part of the vertex, by using negative b over 2a. So the h, which is really a t value, the t value that gives us the vertex is negative b over 2a. And so looking at our function here, the a is the negative 16 and the B is the 88. So we plug those values in, we have negative 88 over two times A, which is negative 16. Throw this in the calculator and you get 2.75 seconds. So this is actually part of the answer here. So this is the T value of when the firework reaches 
its maximum height. So that first part is when does the firework reach its maximum height? Well, that's at after 2.75 seconds. Now we want to know what is the maximum height. So to plug it in to get the maximum height, we have S of 2.75 is equal to negative 16 times 2.75 squared. Again, we're just plugging in into the S of T function up above plus 88 times 2.75, which is just the T value. And again, we can throw this in the calculator and we get 121 feet. And so this here is the maximum height. And that's at that vertex. So we can label this on the graph 121. So after 2.75 seconds, the firework will reach its maximum height of 121 feet, and that's when it will explode. So one question to, to ask yourselves or think about is if we have a bird flying at an altitude of 150 feet versus a bat that's flying you know, more erratically fluctuating between 75 feet and 100 feet, we can think about like which animals should we be more worried about hitting? And we'd actually be more worried about the bat because, first of all, the bird isn't even in the range. So the bird is outside of the range. And the bat is inside of the range. So we're, we're worried about the bat. So now let's say that we have the height of a ball in feet, where the ball is just held or hit directly upward from a baseball player's bat. It doesn't go left or right at all. We're just looking at the vertical height. It leaves the bat at an initial velocity of 90 feet per second and can be modeled with this function here, h of t, h standing for height, t standing for time in seconds, is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 90 t plus three. So we wanna figure out at what time does the ball reach its maximum height. So we're doing kind of the same thing again. We're looking for the vertex. The maximum height, whenever you hear that, that's meaning vertex. So to find the vertex, remember that's negative b over 2a. And we can label this as a is the negative 16 and 90 is the b. So we have this is equal to negative 90 over 2 times a, which is 2 times negative 16. Punch that into the calculator and you get 2.81 seconds is when the ball reaches its maximum height. So if we were to graph this, and it's just going to be a rough sketch again, just general parabola shape, the vertex here, the maximum height happens at 2.81 seconds. And so this next question is asking, for what time interval will it be more than 120 feet above the ground? So the way that we answer this question is that we're looking at you know, at 120 feet, maybe is somewhere around here. You know, it's that it's just a vertical height. So what we're looking for is from you know what time to what time is it going to be at this 120 feet or above the 120 feet? So we're looking for this x value and this x value here. So we're looking for these two x values. So we plug in 120 in for the output, or in this case, the h of t. So let's plug in 120 is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 90 t plus 3. And now what we always want to do whenever we're trying to solve for the input variable, the t or the x, we always want to get everything to be on the same side. We want 0 on one side of the equation. So we are going to subtract 120 on both sides to get everything to be on the same side. And we just are left with zero on the left side here. And so we have negative 16 T squared plus 90 T and then three minus 120 is negative 117. And so we want to use the quadratic formula. Because we have a quadratic that's equal to zero and we want to solve for the t. So to use that quadratic formula, or the quadratic formula we, we wrote above, we wrote it as x, but in this case it's t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So let's plug that in and remember what we have here. This is the a, the negative 16, the 
90 is the B and the negative 117 is the C. So let's plug all those in and see what we get. So we have T is equal to negative B, so negative 90, plus or minus the square root of B squared, so that's 90 squared, minus 4 times A, which is negative 16, times C, which is negative 117, all divided by 2 times A, which is 2 times negative 16. So we have negative 90 plus or minus on the inside of the parentheses here. When we simplify all this, we get this is 612, all divided by negative 32. And so at this point, we have the plus or minus. We can actually simplify or at least write an approximation for what the square root of 612 is. Put that in your calculator, and you should get the approximation is, so we have negative 90 plus or minus 24.74 approximately. And this is all divided by negative 32. So the plus or minus here says that we're going to have two solutions. So we have to actually look at those two different solutions. So we have here one solution is going to be t is equal to negative 90 plus 24.74. So we have positive version divided by negative 32. So let's simplify this part. We should end up getting, if you throw this in the calculator, this is about 3.59 seconds. So that's one part. And then the other part, so this is the positive version and the negative version is t is equal to negative 90 minus, right? Because this is plus or minus. So we're looking at the minus part, minus 24.74 divided by negative 32. And when we put this in the calculator, this should give us about 2.04 seconds. So this is the interval for which the ball is above 120 feet. So the x values that are associated with 120, so we put 120 in for the y, and we got the x value of 2.04 and also the x value of 3.59. So written as an interval, that would be 2.04 to 3.59. So then another question that we could ask is, after how many seconds will the ball return to the ground? So when we say return to the ground, what that's saying is that the height, so the h of t, is equal to zero. Right? That's when the ball hits the ground. So Let's plug in zero for h of t and then solve for t. So we have zero is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 90 t plus three. Now this is another situation where we have the zero is equal to a quadratic expression. We have the variable t squared. So to solve for the t, we use the quadratic equation. So we use the quadratic equation again. So we have it set up as t is equal to negative 90 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 90 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 16, times c, which is 3, all divided by 2 times a, which is negative 16. So let's try to work this out. We have t is equal to negative 90 up front. When we punch in the stuff inside of the square root in the calculator, we get 8,292. And this is all divided by 2 times negative 16, which is negative 32. And so let's bring this up a little bit. We have t is equal to negative 90 plus or minus. When we put in the square root of 8,292, we get approximately 91.06. And this is all divided by negative 32. And so we split this into two separate scenarios. One scenario is the plus and the other is the pot is the minus. So we have t is equal to negative 90 plus 91.06, all divided by negative 32. And then the other version is t is equal to negative 90 minus 91.04, all divided by negative 32. And so when we put this in the calculator, we get t is approximately 
negative 0 0.33 seconds. But then t is also approximately on the other one, 5.66 seconds. So we want to look at this and see, well, the ball can't hit the ground twice. You could just hit it straight up once. So we want to ask ourselves, well, which one should we use here? Well, we should use the positive answer because it wouldn't really make much sense to use the negative answer because we can't really go back in time. We can only go forward in time. So we would say after he hits the ball, it will hit the ground in 5.66 seconds. We couldn't say, oh, before he hits the ball, it'll hit the ground in a third of a second. So let's take a look at another scenario that we can use Quadrax to, in this case, model uh, price changes in drugs. So let's say wholesale drug price increase in percent can be modeled by this function. So the output, remember, is the price increase. So that's how much from one year to the next that the price increase, and we're starting at X, is the number of years since 1990. And so the A part here is positive. So this function is going to look something along the lines of this kind of function or this graph here. And what we're looking at on this first part is when was the smallest percent increase? So smallest percent increase means vertex. We're looking at the minimum. So to find the vertex, remember the vertex is x is equal to negative b over 2a. So in this case, the a is the 0 0.188, the b is the negative 2.05, and then the c is the 7.46. And so we have negative b, which is negative 2.05, so I'll put that in parentheses, divided by 2 times a, which is 0 0.188. And we punch this into the calculator and we get this is approximately 5.45. And this is measuring x, and x is years, years since 1990. And on this one, if we did want to know what was the smallest percent increase, we would just plug in the 5.45 in for the x in the function. But here the question is only asking for when was the smallest percent increase. So we just needed the x value. And if we wanted to go even further, we would say this is in the year 1995 or you can maybe say 1996 if we do need to to round you can make an argument for rounding to which one or the other but just natural rounding we would go down to 1995. So this next part here is asking what does the model predict for 2006? So for 2006 this is giving us a time it's giving us an x value. So since 1990 is what x is measuring 2006 is 16 years after 1990. So this is 16. And we just plug in 16 into the function for x. So we have f of 16 is equal to 0 0.188 times 16 squared minus 2.05 times 16 plus 7.46. And we throw this into the calculator, we should get about 22.788. And it's measuring percent. So the next part is when will the price increase be 5%? So it's telling us the price increase is 5%. So this is giving us the output value or the y value. So this is giving us f of x is equal to 5. So we plug in 5 for f of x and then we have to solve for x. So we're saying 5 is equal to 0.188x squared minus 2.05x plus 7.46. And here's another case where we're trying to solve for x and we have a quadratic, it's x squared. So we want to get x by itself. So we subtract five on both sides to get all the x's together to get everything on the same side. So subtract five there. And we have zero is equal to 0.188x squared minus 2.05x plus 2.46. And so now we have zero is equal to the quadratic and we can use the quadratic formula. So this is equal to, remember this would be A here, B here, and C here. So to set this up, we have 
negative b, so negative negative 2.05 plus or minus the square root of negative 2.05 squared minus 4 times a, which is 0 0.188 times c, which is 2.46. Gonna need to extend the roof on here. All divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 0 0.188. Eight. And so I'll leave the calculator calculations up to you, but we should end up getting X is approximately 1.37 and we'd also get 9.53 and this is measuring years. So now to summarize everything, we can say that given a function in the form F of X equal to AX squared plus BX plus C, where A is not equal to zero, we can rewrite it into the vertex form where h is equal to the negative b over 2a and k is equal to f of negative b over 2a. That's the vertex part. The shape of the graph is a parabola, which is a U shape with vertex at the h and the k and the axis of symmetry is x equals h. If the graph opens up, that means A is positive or greater than zero. If the graph opens down, then that means that A is less than zero or it's negative. It becomes skinnier if we would say the absolute value of A is greater than one because that would give us a vertical stretch versus it would make it wider if the absolute value of A was less than one because that would be a vertical compression. And then to find the y-intercept, we can find it by like letting x be equal to zero. So it will actually be, at, if we plug it in for all these values, it will be at c. And then the x-intercepts can be located by letting y equal zero. And then we can find it by using the quadratic formula, which we'll write down here is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's the quadratic functions.